So uh, this is the quote answer key for the third homework in unit one. And so if we read the directions here in the very big red boxes, maybe they're not that big, but they're certainly re very, very red. There are two worksheets to complete for this homework. So here's a worksheet and here's a worksheet. If you don't know the parlance, a uh, whole Excel file is called a workbook. And each one, each of these tabs is a worksheet. And so they're just telling you, you got two sheets. One, creating input output values and sheet two, identifying patterns. Notice how the tab is called or labeled identifying patterns. The instructions for this page are, there are six tables to complete in this first worksheet. For each table, you create Excel formulas that will fill in the table as described by the given formula or description. Then drag the formula down through row 67 to fill the table. So I'm gonna scroll up um, just to see that we go down to 67. And so um, we're gonna get started. So it's kind of like your uh, T-charts as some, some teachers and students call them or your XY table. And so X is just a value that you're inputting into the function and your function appears here. This first one, table one, is called Y equals 1500 times the quantity 1.03, which is raised to the X. Now the implication is that this X, because we did this previously in homework two, is this X is gonna to refer to the value for X. So I wanna type in, I wanna create a function or a formula. So I wanna hit equals and then I'm gonna type in 1500 and I'm actually going to turn on some functionality uh, so that I can highlight something. Uh, what do I want? Um, F5. Okay, so now it's going to hopefully do this correctly. Yeah, and you can't see it anyway. Okay, so then I'm going to hit times. Oh, because I'm not in the field. There we go. Times. Um, that's interesting how that's not working the way I want it to work. And you could put parentheses here, it's not important because there's only one uh, thing being raised to the exponent of x. I'm going to use the caret for an exponent and then instead of hitting typing in x, I'm going to select the cell to my left. And of course, this is a relative reference, so it's saying it's going to be 17, but it's really saying go to the cell directly to my left. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to put 1500 in because 1.03 raised to the zero is 1. And then 1 times 1,500 is 1,500. Now, we're going to take this, and we can either click here and get a black X or a black cross, as uh, Dr. Taylor described in her emails, or I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to hit copy by hitting Command-C, or if you're on a Windows machine, Control-C. I'm going to select the cell below. I'm going to hit Control-V, and it's $45 more because 3% uh, 1500 is $45. But now notice in this cell up here, I was referring to the cell to the left of the cell I'm in, which was B16, excuse me, C17 referring to B17. Now if I go to the cell below, I'm in C18 and it's referring to cell B18, which is the cell just to the left. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. So um, I'm going to take these two and I'm going to select them and I'm going to get the black cross by hovering over this green square in the bottom right hand corner of my cell and I'm going to drag down until I get to the bottom and I release and I'm going to look at these values so or at least to look at the functions it's the same function except it's referring to B19 and that's what it should be because B19 is the cell next door what does this mean? Is a red arrow autofill options, copy cells, file formatting only, fill with form without formatting, flash fill. I don't need any of those. I'm just going to choose that. And I'm just going to leave it sitting there. Who cares? So table two, I'm going to type in a formula that reflects this calculation. So I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to provide less detail now. 25,000, a multiplication symbol, which is um, the star or shift eight. And this time I definitely need parentheses because there's an addition calculation going on inside there in addition to a division calculation, or in other words, there's more than one term in the uh, parentheses. So uh, 0.0475, that's a interest rate of 4.75% divided by the um, number of compounding periods that I'm gonna use in a year, so 12, so we're compounding monthly. That same value is used above the number of compounding periods, which has to be in parentheses, because I'm going to multiply that times the, the um, 
number of times I'm going to compound, and it's really the number of years that I'm going to compound. So if I compound for zero years, I'm going to refer to the cell to the left, E17. I'm going to close parentheses, and I'm going to hit Enter. You've already entered this formula in previously in homework two. And now, I trusting everything's working as it should, I'm going to scroll down, copying that formula to all the cells below, referring to their relative cells to the left. So this second cell, the one below my original one, should, should read all the same information except referring to E18, which is the cell directly to its left, right there. And now in this 1200, there's not a formula I can type in. So notice that these are formulas you've typed in before. So we're checking to see if you still have that recollection. And so this one gives you a description. I'm going to start at 12,000. So that means my, I start with $12,000 and add $400 every time X increases by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 400. So what's happening is if you understand some of the math and you watch the videos, etc., I'm actually going to do the following equals 12, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to do the following. 1 plus 400, close parentheses. So now if we look at that, what I'm doing is I'm taking 12,000, I'm multiplying it times 1 plus 400. That, if I distribute that 12,000, try to think back to alpha 1, it's going to be 12,000 plus, no, I don't want to do that. Wait a second, 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 400. 400, 400, 400, that's going to add 400. Do, 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 do. No. Okay. That's going to add 12,000 to 400. I don't want that. I want, oh, I know what I want. That's, that was dumb of me. So we're probably going to cut that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to equals 12,000, and I'm going to add 400. Not 4,000, 400. And so that's one time through, right? Above, you could type, you could type above equals 12,000 plus 400, but you want it to be, you want it to add nothing. And there's no way to, to write that so it'll add nothing. You can write it to add one, and that's what we're gonna end up doing, but we can't write it to add zero unless we just change that to a zero. But for this formula, if I go up to the formula bar, if I raise this to this B column, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take $12,000 plus $400, but it's only gonna add it once, because 400 plus one, well, I don't want it to be squared. Oh, shite. What does this formula look like? Every time x increases by 1. Oh, I don't want to raise it to the exponent. I just want to multiply it times. Times that. And so that's, yeah. OK, so do this. Okay, so now we go over to this table three, and I'm going to see, read this direction, start 12,000 and add 400 every time x increases by one. So that means in this cell, I'm gonna take 12,000, I'm gonna add 400 once. In this cell, I'm gonna take 12,000, I'm gonna add 400 twice. In this cell, I'm gonna add, uh, take 12,000, I'm gonna add 400 three times. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of ways you can do this. Here's one way. You can take $12,000 and you can add 400 times whatever this cell number is. And that's that. And you could copy this. And when it's 2, it's going to have 8, 12, 12, 8. Now it's going to have 13, 2. And it's going to keep going, right? Or you could do the following. You could say, take the cell before and add 400. And then you could take this and drag it down. It's really just taking the cell beforehand and adding 400. I'm not sure. Notice how the numbers aren't different when I did that. Let's hit undo. And I'll drag it down again. And the numbers don't change. 
But if I, let's undo again. If I drag it to a couple cells below, you'll see them add in and they'll be right 400, 400, 400, 400. So which one is more intelligent? Um, I'm not sure, it depends on what you wanna do with the numbers afterwards. So I'm not sure if one way is more, quote, intelligent as I say, than the other. So I'll just leave it alone. I don't think it matters. Um, this one here, I, I'm gonna subtract 75 every time X is increased by one. So I could do it the way that I left this one, or I can do it this way. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit more intelligent. Watch, I'm gonna hit, e oops, not that one, cell below. I'm gonna hit equals this cell, and I'm gonna add 75 times the number that's over here. Now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a problem because it's not gonna go up by 75. It's gonna go up by way more, and this is why. Maybe it's something you can learn that this sheet wasn't intending you to do. Right now, in this cell, I'm taking this 8,500, I'm gonna add one times 75. In this cell, I'm taking the cell above, which is not 8,500, it's 8,575, 85,075, and I'm adding two times 75, 150. So this is gonna be $75 or 75 more than it should be. Oh, I'm supposed to be subtracting anyway. So let's go back and correct that first. And uh, correct that there as well. So what I'm gonna try to teach you now is a little bit about um, relative, relative cells or uh, fixed cells, if you can call it that. Um, so right now, I'm, this L18 is looking at the cell just above, and I don't want it to do that. I always want it to start out with cell L17. So depending on my usage, I could, I don't want it, I don't care if it changes what column it's gonna be, but I don't wanna change which row it is. I want it to always refer to this row, in this column, but always this row. So let's go back here and change it to be this dollar sign 17, because L, I can change a row when I copy it somewhere else, and it's not, but if I put dollar sign 17, it's always gonna look at cell 17. And now K18, I want it to be relative because I want to take the number to the left. So I'm going to hit enter. It will have taken $75 away, or 75 away. I don't know if it's dollars. And now it should take another 75 and should be 84850. And that's what it is. And now it should be 84775. And that's because it's doing what, it's want, what I want it to do. And it's basically still looking at, if I go up here, it's looking at this cell fixed and this cell relative. So let's go ahead and drag it down the whole thing. So that, I just made that a little bit smarter than you need to make it. It's perfectly fine if you get these same numbers and you're just subtracting 75 each time. And it, if you went and manually subtracted 75 each time, that's not the, that's the, not the intention of the exercise. Okay, start at $7,500, oh this one's really dollars, and increase by 3.1% every time uh, X increases by one. So again, you can do this this way, 7,500, times, it's a compound interest problem, but I'm gonna increase by 0.031. So I'm gonna go one plus 0.031, and so uh, then raise that to the exponent next door. And so that's a relative uh, reference, and that's perfectly fine. You could drag that down and copy. I'm gonna make mine a little bit smarter. I'm gonna show you why I'm making it a little bit smarter. So this is gonna refer to this cell I'm gonna get rid of it, refer to this cell, and I'm gonna make it fixed on the column, but not the row, by putting a dollar sign in front of the 17, and I'm gonna hit enter. And now I'm gonna show you why this is a little bit more intelligent. Now I'm gonna drag and copy, because it's doing what I want it to do, and that's really the answer that should be in your sheet. Those are the numbers that you should be having in your sheet. But what I also wanna do is show you that the reason why I changed that and made it more flexible is I can change this number so imagine you know that you're gonna get that interest rate and somebody, somebody set this up and there's 7,500 in there. But you don't have 7,500. Let's say you have $2,000. If I type $2,000 in place of 7,500, it's now gonna do the calculation based on my principal, pow. And so then in 25 periods, I'm gonna have $4,290, okay? I'm gonna change it back for grading purposes, but that's how you can make things more intelligent. Uh, start $150,000 and decrease by 8.2% every time. So it's the same formula, different numbers, except I'm gonna subtract. So I'm gonna take the original amount and I'm gonna make it smart again. So equals this cell, gonna change this to a dollar sign so it references that row 
no matter what cell below it is, it's going to fix it. I'm going to fix my reference to this cell. And then I'm going to multiply that times 1 minus 0.082, is it? 0.82%. I'm going to raise that to the cell to the left, my compounding period, or my, there we go. And there is, that seems like a lot. I'm going to copy it, but I'm going to check it. Uh, take that much, 1%, 0, 8, 2, 8, 2%. That's right. Q, that's 1. Okay. Uh, I want to see what cells it's referring to. It's doing that correctly. It just seemed like the numbers dec uh, decreased quite rapidly. But 8.2%. Um, 8 8.2%. 10% would have been, would have been $1,500. So, yeah, no, that's, yeah, no. That's good. Okay. Uh, so now on, on to page two. Sorry, that took a while. I was explaining that stuff. Um, so that's that one. Page two. There are four tables given in this second worksheet for each given table. First, write an Excel formula in column D and drag it down. The Excel formula you create in column D should be the calculation used to determine exactly what happens to Y as X increases by one. In column D, after you have determined the correct calculation, I should be able to see a constant fixed value that comes from the pattern that exists in the table. Oh, I see what they're doing. After filling column D for each given table, create a text next to the table, and then write a complete sentence describing the exact pattern that you see. So what we're trying to do is, if you remember from Algebra 1, that you would be given X and Ys, and they wouldn't be these big giant numbers, but you were trying to find an equation that represents this. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to look at, so if you look at the column in the X column, when I change from this first x to the second x, it's a plus one change. And from this one to there, it's a plus one change. From two to three, it's a plus one change. From three to four, it's a plus one change. From four to five, it's a plus one change. From five to six, it's a plus one change, et cetera, et cetera. And our x column's always gonna be this plus one change. Here, I'm going to, what do they want you to do for each period? First writing Excel formula in column D, and drag it down. The Excel formula you create and decode should be the calculation to determine exactly what happens to y as x increases by 1. So what they want you to do is find out, what did I do to this number to get that one, which should be the same or similar, same idea anyway, to go from here to there. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the difference. That's just me. 2500 to 2517, I'm going up by $17.84. This is also going up by $17.84, I believe. So let's say, um, because these are just not intelligent numbers. So they basically want you to, they want you to do the following, right? 2,500 and they want equals, and I'm gonna make these, my quote, my smart cells, right? Put my dollar sign in there. Oops, that's not right. I gotta get up here, sorry. I gotta get up in, up in there. Uh, dollar sign. No, I want to. I want to add. Yeah, I'm going to add what I think is 17.84 times, and then the whatever this is in this number. And did I want? I want a D12, didn't I? I don't know how it changed to B12. Maybe I type that in. You know, you're watching. I'm not paying attention now. Oh, 25,000. So that looks right. Let's see if I drag it down, the numbers should match, right? And the numbers match. So it looks like um, if I steal from the descriptions over here, this is, uh, that's sort of the description we're talking about over here. So this, and what do they want? They want a text box. I'm not a big fan of text boxes, but whatever. Uh, insert the stupid text box right there. And I'm going to type in the language that uh, was used over there. I'm going to change it into the correct numbers that we're using over here. Start at 25,000 and add 1784 for every time x increases by 1. There we go. Okay. So that's the first one. Second one, 2,500 to 26, 
784 or 25,000 to 26 784 this is gonna be some crazy crazy uh, not crazy um, sort of like an interest rate calculation so I think it's gonna be this and then it's gonna be this refer to that I'm gonna multiply this times some that's gonna to refer to this but inside the parentheses we're gonna have one plus because it's increasing so what's 1784 of 25,000 1784 25,000 5% maybe nope so let's figure this out equals this that's the new minus the original that uh, in parentheses divided by the original which was that uh, is going to give me the percent change right so remember that new minus original divided by original that's the percent change so that's the interest rate I'm working with so I want to have that number and actually I'm going to do the following I'm going to grab this and move it up here and I'm going to take this and have it refer to that cell like that but I always want it to refer to that cell so I have to fix it and hit enter and I get the same number let's see if this math works out it doesn't work out it's too much, so it's not that. Mm. Yeah, that's why. That's why it didn't work, because I'm not referencing 25,000. So this is, has, I didn't make this a fixed. So let's hit escape. Let's go up here. I failed to make that a fixed value. We definitely want it to be a fixed, excuse me, fixed cell location. And so now that still works. Let's drag this down and correct all the rest of them. And it works. So that was my formula. You can see it up here. And you could have just typed that number in. I just want to reference it because what if I change my interest rate? I can change that number. So um, this looks very much like this one so I'm going to copy that language and then change the numbers to match so I'm going to insert a text box uh, like that I'm going to paste that just because I'm lazy and hit zero and increase by and I want to type in 7.136 right 7.1 six percent every time X increases by one oops don't want to do that but I do want to do that and get out of there okay so now uh, this third one it looks like another percent change so I'm gonna do some calculations first I'm gonna do the following I'm gonna do it in here so it matches I'm gonna type equals looks like the numbers going down so it's gonna be uh, I'll remember the parentheses up front now because I know I'm going to do subtraction in the numerator, right? It's going to be this number minus, which is the new number, minus the old number, close parentheses, divide that by the old number. And so that represents my percent change, and it's going to be a negative number, but that's perfectly fine. Now here's the adjustment. I'm going to start out with this number, with that number, and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did up here. Here's, here I'm going to show you a shortcut. Um, since this is relatively the same position as that, as this is to this, right? Three and one, three down and one over. This is the same relative position as this cell, meaning this is the same relative position as that cell. And this cell is the, or this cell is the one I want to refer to back over to here. This is what I was referring to back over here. Watch what I can do. I can take that formula, I did all that work, and I can select the cell and Control C or Command C or Edit Copy. If you're not sure how to do all that stuff, Edit Copy, right? And I can paste that in here. Now it's going to be wrong initially because it's uh, oh for two reasons. 
it's still referring to this cell, watch. It's referring to these two cells, right? Because they were not relative position cells. It's so correctly doing this one relative, but we just want to change this to be the correct letter. So we want the, the interest rate to point to E38. So I'm gonna leave it solid, but I'm gonna change this to 38 solid, I mean fixed. Notice how the color drops down to that one. And I don't change the plus and minus sign because my negative sign is already incorporated here because I calculated the percent change correctly. And then instead of referring to D26, I want to refer to D40. So type in 40, see the blue box shifted down, and that should be correct. It looks like it matches up. The number gets less, so it should be correct. And it is. Now I'm going to change, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select all this and copy it. And then I'm going to insert a text box as so. And I'm going to hit paste, edit paste or control paste or control V or whatever you want. And I'm going to change this number to 45,000. And it's going to decrease now. And it's going to decrease by what percentage? It looks like 1.346%. And that's it. Last one. So I'm going to look at this number. It's decreasing. It is decreasing by some paltry amount. So let's do this. I don't know if it's going to work again. It worked the last two times, but who knows what the calculation is. So equals, here's my new number. Oops, forgot the parentheses, right? Parentheses, here's my new number. I'm going to subtract my old value. And I'm going to close parentheses and divide by my old value or my original value and I'm going to hit enter. So that cell to this one is a decrease of 0.795%. Again, I don't know if that's going to hold true for the rest of it, but I'm going to take these two cells. I'm going to copy them here. But remember, our relative positions are different now. So it's really just using these two. That's correct. These two are wrong, but we're going to change these, right? Just like we did last time. So instead of referring to E38, we're going to refer to E52. And then over here, we're going to refer to, instead of D40, we're going to refer to, um, uh, stupid me, what am I talking about? Uh, D54. Yeah. And so the blue box shifted down. And look, that calculation is going to be correct because we did this calculation correctly. And now what's going to happen with the cell below? Please, please, please. It's off. It is off. And that means all of these are going to be off. So what is going on? Okay, so let's, so that's trickier. Let me see, let me think about what, what could possibly be going on there. So let's take this one and subtract this one. And take, and I want it to be in the cell below that. And then take this one, take the previous and subtract current, take the previous and subtract the current, take the previous, subtract the current, and you're wondering why isn't he copying that? I am. I'm going to right now. So that means this should be taking the previous and subtracting the current. Okay. So this is not a constant change, but we didn't expect it to be because we believe it's exponential of some sort. I know I might be speaking out of turn, but I'm trying to sort this out at the same time that you're watching this. And maybe I'll cut this all out. But
so we got this one up here minus this one here. Maybe that's why they're not the same. That's still not quite right. It's not a shift. That's crazy. We have this expectation of finding this pattern. Maybe it's just a straight up subtraction. Maybe it's a straight subtraction. So take this minus. This, subtract that. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to trim that down. So we, so we calculated a percent change and it did not work. And so what I just did was I subtracted, I found the difference between these two numbers and it's that. I found the difference between those two numbers, it's that. And it's a constant change. I should have looked at that first because it's a simpler idea. And if we're watching patterns, we did a straight increase a uh, slope of a slope of 17.84 so it was just a constant rate of change these two were exponential rates of change and so one being increasing one being decreasing and now we have a decreasing constant rate of change those are the four examples that you have here so we're going to have uh, this one it's just that the number is not a pretty number or i shouldn't say pretty number a integer value just like it wasn't here so um, so let's go back we're gonna do this <clears throat> that's our starting value that's gonna be that one and we're gonna subtract this 35 78 46 35 78 46 so actually I want I'm gonna punch it in here take this one subtract take that value and always refer to that value. Oh, it's not doing what I want it to do. Dollar sign. And I'm going to subtract the referred cell times 35.78.46. 35.78.46. Hit enter. That's going to be kind of incorrect. I'm going to drag it up. And now I'm going to drag it down. And all my numbers should match. And they do. And so now I can delete that because that box is useless. And I'm going to insert the text box. And I'm going to go back and change, choose this language. I think I already did, didn't I? Uh, but I don't remember. And V. I'm going to start out with 45,000 and subtract. And I don't even remember it now. 38, 38, 46, 78, something like that. Every time X increases, but I'm going to go back and check. 35, 78, 46, 35, 78, 46. Oops. 357846. 357846. It works out. Okay, so uh, that was my little uh, answer key. I know it's long. I'll try to trim some stuff out. Bye.